Hello friends, Dave Webster, Identity Crisis Design. I'm uh, working on a personal project on this video. I decided to take a break from the uh, rat race, uh, or if I'm to offer an anagram, the art race. At any rate, uh, what I have is a guitar shape. It's a piece of wood, basically, that is in the shape of a guitar. Uh, that I brought up to Buffalo when my wife and I went on a road trip, a little weekend, to go see our favorite band, Big Wreck. From they they come from Toronto to Buffalo and uh, and they play. They don't they don't always get all the way into Pittsburgh where we're around, but uh, so anytime we go to see them, we usually drive up there. I grew up there, so I get to go see some friends and stuff and. We do the whole VIP package, um, you know, go in for sound check, get to, you know, meet the band, take a picture. And I usually try to bring, bring something cool with me that I've made to have signed. And it, in this time, it was this guitar shape. But I was so busy, I didn't have time to actually make the artwork that I wanted to. I, I didn't, it wasn't finished when I brought it up. I was going to have to finish it after and basically like, Hey guys, you know, sign this thing. And then at some point I'm going to finish this and there'll be a really cool video. And this is it. So what's happening here is that this logo is a hand drawn logo. That's been featured on clothing and album covers. It is the big rec logo. And I was a little surprised that I was able to find a high resolution image of this original, what is clearly hand drawn work. For my purposes, I need to be able to turn the basics of this into a vinyl cut mask so that I can gild this guitar shape that has already been signed by the band and then outline it and add the, if you can see these drop shadow strokes and the dimension that's given to this image with uh, lines and hash marks. The idea is get the basic shape on there, gild it, and then reproduce what we're seeing here. All the black work, all the black line work will be done with uh, brush and enamel over the gold. So what I'm doing with Illustrator here is using the pen tool to create bezier curves that the vinyl cutter knife will understand how to basically connect the dots and cut these lines into a vinyl mask that I can peel up later. In computer graphics, there's vector and there is a bitmap or a pixelated graphic. Pixelated graphics, like in Photoshop, it can basically be distilled into these two programs, Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator, or if you're Canadian, Corel Paint and Corel Draw. And they all do the same thing. One of them is dealing with bitmaps and the other one is dealing with vector graphics. Bitmap, you can zoom in and you can see that pixelated thing. You can zoom in right down to that single pixel. Vector graphics retain their sharpness no matter how far you zoom in or zoom out because the computer is constantly redrawing the shape because it's based on this. It, it always knows where the line is. So the line is the thing as far as the as far as the vinyl cutter goes. The line is the thing. It's like a uh, it's it's a it's a program. It's not a pixel, and so that's what I'm creating here. Uh, you can see I'm you know there's curves and points and and I'm pulling the bezier handles back and forth, and I'm using this red color so that I can see where I'm going. Um, I'm imagining while I'm doing this that the pinstripe line that I plan on pulling in the future is going to be as thick as the line that I'm using right here while keeping in mind how the vinyl cutter actually works. 
uh, like uh, two circles in a Venn diagram that create that football shape in the middle. If I don't get rid of that, the vinyl cutter will actually cut it. In other words, if what I'm looking for is one solid shape of two circles with nothing in between, I have to get rid of that. And I have to keep this in mind whenever I'm overlapping these these arms and these curls that go around the, the W over the B. The advantage to the shape of this logo is that it is mostly symmetrical, 95% symmetrical. The W, I can do one half of it, copy it, flip it over, join the two halves together, and I've saved myself a ton of time. The B is basically the same. I just have to take care of that stuff that's on the, in the center on the left and the right side so that it looks like a B, not like a figure eight. Um, I've been working with Illustrator since version eight. I love this program. Uh, I don't know how I would be able to get half of the artwork that I have done or will do without it. Um, it is really an invaluable tool. So with that being said, um, I'm going to finish up the graphic, export it to something the vinyl cutter can read, uh, which happens to be an Illustrator 8 file. This is an older vinyl cutter I got from Sign Warehouse. It's a Lynx 60. I've, the only one I've ever owned is the only one I've ever needed. Um, it runs off of OS 9, which is the reason why I actually have this computer on the other side of the room. I haven't upgraded anything yet because it, the thing won't quit. I put plastic over it whenever I'm done. It's never gotten dusty or clean. This is what happens when you take care of your stuff. It will, it'll last forever. So I have an old Mac running OS 10.4.11, which is the very last version of Tiger where you can run OS 9 on a classic layer, which is what the software uses. It's a minor, minor inconvenience to, you know, export a file in Illustrator over to the other computer and, and have it run. And it's a system that I've been, you know, used to for years. You know, you get set in your way sometimes. So I, uh, I do a couple of test cuts. I adjust the pressure to the knife so that I know what is going to be an easy weed. In other words, whenever I go to take the shapes out and decide what's going to stay and what's going to I'm going to leave behind, I'll not have to fight the vinyl. If you don't set the knife down force hard enough, it won't cut through the vinyl. It'll just score it. If you set it too hard, it'll cut through the paper. That's no good either. So we're basically just watching the vinyl cutter do its thing, and then in the next segment, we'll weed and apply the mask. So before I cut the vinyl out, I decided to use Illustrator to help me decide how I wanted to do the color. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the letters in both colors, or, or two colors, or one color, and I just kind of flipped around, you know, a white W, a gold B, both gold, both white, and then eventually I just decided on this with a gold W and a white gold B. So I'm going to be placing this in the meaty part of this guitar shape. And when I brought this up to the show, I, I kindly asked the guys, please sign it on the neck. I've got more work to do on this. I was, you know, told the whole thing. I'm busy. You know, you might as well. So Ian Thornley grabs a marker that's almost out. I guess, what are you going to do? And he's like, oh, no, <laughs> I'm like, don't worry about it. I'm sure like if I'd have had a rag with some thinner on it, I would have just wiped it off right there, grab a new marker and try it again. But then uh, uh, Seiku, the drummer, he goes and just draws an arrow over to this other part here. And just here, sign it down here, which is way out of the way. And I'm, I'm not even I'm glad that he did it because it just adds that kind of character to it. Now there's even a better story to the VIP presentation. Uh, than I would have had if everything had worked out right. That's got personality to it. There's there's Seiko juice all over this project now. So basically what's happening here is I'm weeding out the stuff that I don't want. And since I'm going to be doing this in two colors, I'm saving uh, I'm saving one of the areas so that I can reapply it later on. I have to size, guild, and then size and guild the 
the, the, I have to do the white gold and then the actual gold. I can't remember which one I did first, but so it's basically working with color forms. If you're a kid, it was uh, this this toy that was you know thick vinyl stuff that you you could stick and reapply. And I think I remember having like a Scooby Doo version of it where you could you know put the different characters in different areas of this haunted house um, map, and you know it was it was okay. But every time I do this, it reminds me of that. And that's and that's all this is. Eventually. Once everything is in place, I'll be using a transfer tape to hold everything in place, stick it to the guitar shape, pull it away, apply the guild or apply the size, and then gild the piece. So transfer tape is basically a giant piece of masking tape. Um, it's a little bit thinner. It's got varying degrees of adhesive depending on what you're doing. Sometimes you need more aggressive tack, sometimes you don't, and um, you know, I've got a couple of different rolls of stuff. I Honestly, I don't know which one is which. It either works or it becomes a fight. <clears throat> um, such is my organizational skill. Can't find my squeegee, so I'm using this rolling ruler to you know, lay things down, which is, for this application, is fine. I'm not looking to... Um, if I was applying something with vinyl, like like applying vinyl to a truck, but uh, I, I know what I'm trying to get uh, get away with here, and you know, in a pinch, you don't want to use anything but a squeegee, but in a pinch, you could use a credit card. Uh, so the next thing is to make sure I, I want to put a center line on this so that I know I don't have to guess on one end or the other. I can see where the middle is because this is a symmetrical design. But I want to be able to see it on the ends. I want to be able to match up one hash mark with whatever I'm going to be putting on the guitar uh, measurement uh, tool. And once that's done, I'll apply the vinyl mask and then peel off the transfer tape and start applying the size. So carefully put the guitar on the art table and not hit the camera with your head. I'm uh, Sizing up, I think I've got a white water soluble pencil mark on here telling me where the middle is. And um, just basically going to show you a technique here. Uh, it's no secret, it's basically how you want to apply vinyl when you've got a, a larger piece like this. And just to keep it stable, um, sometimes I'll go right down the middle, apply one half, and then apply the other half. Um, it really depends on. What you're what you're trying to do, so I just reposition it, and make sure that it's right dead in the middle, and then well, we'll, we'll see. it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, when you're peeling this back, of course, sometimes you'll get a piece coming off the transfer tape and st sticking to the to the backing, so you want to be careful that that doesn't happen. Stick it on there and peel off the transfer tape and start gilding. Uh, at this point, I remember that I forgot to record putting in the pieces that make up the W. Since I'm doing this in two colors, I need to mask one of the letters off. And I believe I'm starting with the aluminum here. Yeah. And I've added some black to the size. Normally, I mean, it comes out of the can clear. So depending on the surface that you're working on, you want to add some black or you want to add some imitation gold so that you can see where your brush strokes are. Um, it's a big help um, when you're working with something that's clear. You either have the light hitting it just right, you can hit see everything, or you have to move your head around so that you can you know tell where you've where you've painted. So that's all this is. A couple of drops of black in there so that whenever I go to peel this off I can see where I've been. And it also helps with um, uh, seeing where your holidays quote unquote are. The, if, if you get some gold that's got a um, whenever you're gilding sometimes there will be a crack or a split or a hole and you want to make sure that that gold gets stuck back in there. You don't want to have those holes. The black in the size helps you see that. The swatch that I'm putting down here is for knuckle testing with your pinky knuckle. When it gets tacky enough to put the aluminum down, that's how you know it's time. 
That way you don't get knuckle marks in your artwork. Um, when you go to gild the size, those knuckle marks will show up if they're super deep and you don't want to do that. Makes a mess. So this is where I end up testing the swatch. And right now I'm, I'm getting a second opinion from my left hand and then I start to lay down the aluminum. This aluminum here is uh, loose leaf. Now there's two ways you can get your metal or your gold. Loose leaf or patent leaf. Patent leaf is a gold that is attached to the paper with a very, very, very light uh, tack. Loose leaf um, is, is like this. It's very, very wispy. Um, really don't want to have a lot of air movement. No air movement if possible. No fans, no wind, no nothing. Because it just blows all over the place. This uh, aluminum is a little bit easier to handle as a loose leaf. Um, regular gold, you're going to have a gilder's tip, which is a very thin, sparsely haired brush that is about as wide as the sheet of gold. And you kind of brush it through your hair to get some oils on it so that it'll stick to the leaf and pick it up. And, you know, a lot of glass gilders use it. But uh, this is easy enough. Um, basically working it like aluminum foil, which is what it is. It's just very, very thin. I'm going to be sticking it to the surface here and trying to pat it down as much as I can with the, my gloved hand. I, I don't know why I don't have both hands gloved. Um, it really doesn't make any sense. I honestly can't stand to have gloves on my hands. Um, they get in the, with these, or they get sweaty and whatever, and it just yeah, I don't know, I don't like it. At any rate, once this goes down, you want to press it in and make sure that it's super attached. And um, and to make that happen, I'll use a piece of the tissue paper laid over the top, and then and then really press and really not rub it, but rub the paper, keep the paper in place, and just really press down, just like this. So you put the paper down and then run it across your, your, your finger across or just like that. I believe that uh, Time Warp Custom Paint has a roller he likes to use um, that he sells as part of his um, part of his apparatus. I haven't looked into it. I after doing enough of these, I feel like I should, because right now I'm using a business card, the corner of a it's actually a independent comic book company's comic book checklist. Uh, thank you, Peter Samedi. Thanks for all the comics. That's um, Alterna's checklist card, and I'm basically just using the corner of it. It happened to be sitting right next to me, and off camera is a stack of uh, comic books that I have yet to read. If I can just get all this other work done first. And uh, this is basically how it works. And then I'll be getting rid of the rest of the loose leaf and trying to trying to not make a mess of it because once you start brushing the gold off, it really does. It gets all over the place and eventually on, you know on the floor and you know you always leave these breadcrumbs. You can tell who's been gilding. And uh, I believe this is it. Now what I use is um, I have a makeup brush. You use. Um, um, you can use any any kind of like a really nice loosely haired uh, brush to, to to move the the gold out of the way, and that's all you're really doing is just getting rid of the loose stuff here. I do have a keyboard vacuum cleaner that I like to use to pick up a lot of this loose material. Um, makes it a little bit easier to keep the area clean. Um, I don't really know how effective it is, but. You know, I kind of use it. Maybe I just keep it around like a good luck charm. And here it is. Yeah. And I actually, the pack rat in me will open this because it's, it's the only thing that I use it for. And I'll get all those little bits of gold out of there and put them in a little Ziploc bag because I might be able to use them for a little project later. You know, some random color effects and... You know, who knows? You know, always looking f to innovate. But uh, right now it looks like everything's basically clean. And uh, we're going to move on and gild the W. Uh, which starts by 
peeling off the pieces that I forgot to record putting back in. Um, now, uh, one of the things you want to watch for is any of the leaf coming up off of what you just freshly gilded. So anytime I'm pulling mask up, I don't pull it up. I kind of pull it across and away. Um, yes, it has to be pulled up, but if you pull it straight up, there's a chance that you might peel up the foil that you just laid down. Um, especially this, this harder stuff. Uh, it looks like I found a, um, a holly or a place where um, what I just explained actually happened. I, I, I peeled up a mask, a piece of the foil came with it, so I had to put it back in real quick. And that's going to be the same process going all the way through the letter. Make sure that there's no um, holidays. You, you know, double check it. Be careful how you pull your mask off. You want to pull it away and across. Um, you want to pull it. Um, you don't want to. You don't want to pull the mask up over what you just did. Uh, you always want to pull it away from your from your from your project or from from your previous guild just like that, pulling it away. Um, and uh, wash, rinse, repeat. Keep going just like that. I'm going to speed it up here because um, this is stuff that you've already seen. Um, putting the size in on this, I decided to get in with a fine brush and deal with some of the details where the W and the B cross over. I don't know in retrospect if I were if I would do that again um, what happens is the glue that you first put down it starts to get dry it starts to set up and then whenever I go to put the glue down after it I think I ended up with some it was uh, globular in places uh, overall it's not a bad looking project but that's the kind of stuff that you notice when you live your life six inches away from this stuff so now that the sizes down. Um, I've waited longer than I did for the aluminum because this is 24 karat. Uh, it's actually 23 karat red gold, which means it has a little bit of uh, copper in it, one karat worth. And it uh, just gives it a little bit of a warmer color. Uh, this is what I used on the Hudson Henry J because I felt like it went along with the browns that were in the rest of the paint job in Similarly, this guitar has, um, this guitar shape rather, has a nice, um, you know, natural brown color to it. So I felt that the, uh, the red gold would complement this. Also, I have more of this than I have of anything else. This is Patent Leaf. Um, uh, oddly, uh, when I had ordered this for the last project, I made the mistake of not double checking to make sure what kind I got, and I ended up getting loose leaf. The um, the good people at Golden Leaf Productions, um, <clears throat> sorry, GoldenLeafProducts.com, um, handled that, which was my mistake. Handled it um, very well and um, made life uh, easy. Um, had a really nice conversation with the sales guy out there, Lauren. I highly recommend dealing with these people. Um, they really know what they're doing. So it's basically the same process as before. I'm just being a little bit more delicate with it because it's a much thinner, much more delicate material. So I'm just going to speed this along so that um, you know we don't waste any more time on this portion. Uh, so now that that part is done, uh, we peel away the entire mask, and I'm trying to be very careful with this. There's a lot of twists and turns, so there's going to be places where I decide to rip the mask versus trying to get in there and turn it and spin it so that it pulls away from the graphic in the exact way that I want. I'll have to get back in there with an X-Acto knife and, and get a little bit more um, detail-oriented in pulling the mask away. And so here you see it uh, really carefully. Get as much of that mask out of the way as possible, as as carefully as possible. The 24 karat gold is a, 
because it's not as thick, it does not tend to want to stick to itself more than it wants to stick to the size. So it's a little bit more forgiving as far as peeling up uh, masks. Um, I did a road glide the other day that with um, with aluminum that was just an absolute bear trying to get stuff to stick, and and I did not wait that long for the for the size to 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 get to the condition that, that it should be in, but um, still it was just. Heavier leaf is great um, when it comes to turning it because you can use a paper towel, you can use uh, sanding discs. It's not as delicate that way, um, but it may, when you're when you're trying to get it to separate from your from your mask, it's a whole other uh, a whole other animal. Uh, so this is where we start turning the metal. Uh, the first one we're going to do is the gold. So I have the uh, spinster turning tool with the velvet attachment or the velvet over the attachment. This isn't a very wide, um, a very wide graphic as far as its individual components go. So I'm using the half inch, um, the half inch attachment. Now I can do this by hand, but it's really made for working with an automatic screwdriver or a drill or something like that. And uh, so that's basically what happens. Uh, velvet is what you want to use on gold. You can see it. Uh, you can see how it works right there. And then when you're working with composite leaf, you use a fine, fine grain sandpaper, which is what's underneath the velvet. It's attached with a uh, little Velcro. So I'm basically going to go through, and um, I had to adjust the angle on the camera pretty drastically so that you could see past the screwdriver. And um, this basically, this is it. I'm, I'm going through and, and uh, turning, spinning the gold. When you're working with the gold, you want to spin it after it's been gilded. You don't want to wait for the, because the glue is still soft underneath somewhat. Uh, and, and because it yields is what allows the gold to turn and move uh, a little bit. And then the, the velvet polishes it and it actually kind of like turns the, the metal a little bit. With the composite metal, you're putting scratch marks in it. That's, um, that's how that works. Now, you can use a super fine grain sanding disc on the gold if it's the next day. Like you can't get to it, you can't turn it, or you don't want to or whatever. I've tried this before. The sanding pads on there are 4,000 grit, and they're very uh, spongy. They're not like a normal Trizac pad. It's about a sixteenth of an inch thick. Uh, these are about a quarter of an inch or a little bit. Uh, they're, they're more, uh, well, they're thicker. They're spongier, so it gives you uh, more uh, yield. So it's a, it's a more delicate, and uh, I'm going to speed this up so that we can get through it faster. Uh, so here is where you can see me taking the spinster tool and I, I unpeel the velvet. Around that attachment is a groove that an O-ring fits into and that's what holds the, the velvet on. So once you remove that, what's underneath is that 4,000 grit sanding pad. This is the half inch still. And I'm working on the aluminum. It's a tougher metal. Velvet's not going to do anything to it. Well, it's not going to, you want it to be really nice and bright. So that's why we use the uh, sanding disc. And I'm going to go around and do the same thing that I did with the uh, W. Now, if, if you look in some of these areas, you can see that gold is stuck to the aluminum. That's one of the things about doing gold leaf and why I did the masking on this the way that I did, because uh, gold and, and especially gold, because it's so uh, fine, it has a tendency to stick to places that you don't want it to. And this is a varnished um, surface. And it was fairly uh, young. You know, it was only like a, maybe a couple of days old. So I don't want the gold sticking to places where it doesn't belong. And that's why I did the mask, then the size, then the gold, and then peeled it up. 
so I wouldn't have it would be a hassle otherwise trying to get it uh, trying to clean the gold up afterwards it would be sticking all over the place to uh, to this guitar this guitar shape so um, you can see some areas there where there's gold stuck to the aluminum that's how finicky the stuff is and um, I'm basically I'm just turning some I'm putting some turns in it and uh, getting a feel for you know how it's going to work out but i i know that i got to get rid of that gold on there somehow and um, i brought that little card out again and it uh, kind of worked really well i just sort of like rubbed it off you'll see it in a second right so you can see that i'm just basically rubbing the gold off of the aluminum because it's it's it's, it's stuck there but it's not really stuck there it's kind of like laying there so I go through this, I clean it up, and then I'll finish with the uh, turning tool. Uh, and then also I used it as a shield to lay over the gold so that whenever I put the turning tool in there, I didn't um, cross over the the line and uh, attack the gold with the sanding disc. So that came in handy. There's a lot of improvisation that happened um, in this project. I, as soon as I was figured I was going to do it in two colors, um, I knew I was going to have to... I, I knew that I was going to be a little bit of a stranger in a strange land. But it worked out pretty good. I learned some new things, taught myself some new things. So the outlining begins here. You see, I, I got a stroke right there and at the top of the B before I was like, uh, oh, make sure I'm recording. I believe I'm using a, a virus size two. And uh, <clears throat> so there's going to be these edges. Um, I wanted to outline because it helps um, clean up some of the raggediness of, uh, of doing gold leaf. <clears throat> Sometimes you get um, a piece that peels up or a corner that doesn't look quite right and it's nice to be able to you know go and do an outline and, and either cover that somehow or get attention away from it. And uh, I always imagine there being like a maroon, like an old blood uh, color to this. So that's uh, what I started out with. Now, the glove is just a cotton glove I'm using to keep myself from getting old finger oils and salt and stuff all over the all over the surface. Because I'm going to be varnishing this later. I'm going to be uh, putting it under uh, on a shellac, but I think maybe shellac, shellac varnish. Maybe they're probably the same thing, and I don't know it. Uh, but after the outline, there's going to be some shading, and it's a little bit of a painstaking process, as you can see, so I'm going to speed this up. I wish I was this fast in real life, man. I'd be making so much money. So here I'm putting in the drop shadows and the detail lines on top of the gold like it is in the original drawing. I want to pay as much homage to that as possible. Um, the only reason I use the vinyl is so again that I could clean it up. That way the lines are cleaner, not as wiggly. And then here I'm doing the pinstriping effects on the rest of the guitar face. I had planned from the outset on accentuating the signatures and outlining them and making them part of the entire, the whole other part of the composition. Of course, uh, Seiku provided me a challenge. Um, don't have a problem with that. Uh, and as far as the neck is concerned, this is what it was going to be. An offset stroke along all of the signatures and a design element a classic pinstripe design element at uh, where the tuning keys would go. And then uh, later add a little bit of black to go along with the color of the signatures themselves. 
and shellac the whole thing and get a picture of it. And then I got the idea of maybe I can Photoshop it into the picture of us and the band. Cause in the picture, I'm just holding this thing. It's blank. It's got, it's been signed, but there's no artwork on it. And uh, I could maybe go in there and uh, treat Photoshop like a time machine. So I don't know if you saw that there. I had planned on keeping those two um, elements open on either side of that center teardrop, but um, it wasn't. It every once and sometimes it'll happen to you where it doesn't go evenly for you. So you're like, all right, well I'll just I'll fill it in and I'll I'll make it wide on one side and then wider on the other side of the of the stripe element. This here is nice uh, asymmetrical. I don't have to worry about making things even on both sides because the guitar has this offset look to it. And I can just uh, I take my time and it's it's great when you know you don't have to care about whether it's the same on on both sides. So it's a little bit more like playtime. Which I mean this uh, this was playtime from the very beginning. I've always held that the purest art that one can do is always the stuff where there's no money involved from the beginning. Like nobody hired you to do this specific thing. Uh, you're just doing it for yourself and it makes it a lot more fun and, and it shows up in the work. And so there we have before and after all done. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell for notifications. I'll be back in the future with more videos. I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. And until then, keep slinging that paint.